Welcome to the Blind Tinkerer's Workshop. Alright, at this time we're going to hand hold the camera, but we'll be very careful of it. Um, upon inspection, this uh, fusible 22 ohm resistor is open. The, uh, the silicon diode, which is this little flat looking round thing here, right there is the, the silicon diode, um, it's 300 milliamps. Right here. Eyesight is bad as always. But Two hundred milliamps. Two hundred. Okay. Now that test okay. The twenty-two ohm resistor, which is right here, the fusible resistor, it's open. I don't even know if I can get those anymore. So what I might have to do is to put a twenty-two ohm five watt in there and fuse it somewhere along the line. Um, the reason these blow out most likely got a bad electrolytic in here now we've got um, an 80 microfarad right here we're going to replace it with a hundred you can go up but don't go down at 250 volts but there's only about a hundred and forty five to hundred and fifty volts in here anyhow and uh, so putting in a capacitor rated um, 200 be sufficient, but I'm going to go 250 and This is a 50 and this is a 50 so we need 247s in here uh, The 1500 ohm resistor here the filter resistor that goes between them right here is good uh, The 120 ohm filter resistor one watt right here is 133 ohms it went up a little bit in value and that's located right here right behind this red wire here went up brown red and brown it's a two watt resistor it looks like it's been overheated it's climbed to 133 ohms this is a 10 microfarad at 25 volts electrolytic. It's going to be replaced. This is the cathode bypass capacitor for the audio output tubes. I'm going to replace that with a 22 microfarad 50 volt, which I do have in stock, so Bob doesn't have to uh, order that from Sal's. These are the capacitors I've got from uh, one of my viewers. And um, I'm going to replace the 80 microfarad with 100 at 250. One of these. So all I have to do is Bob will have to buy 247s at 250 volts. This capacitor here, this red one down here is a 0.047. It's a line bypass capacitor and it is located right here. Now, I don't have anything to point with, so I'll use my finger, that's all. I ain't got nothing right now. Um, the B- minus is not chassis ground. right here this is so the B minus is floating off the chassis the negatives of these filter capacitors here are at the B minus level if you follow it back up here and over here the B minus this is the plug a, Mo, a Molex I guess it's the white one there I guess they call a Molex the top pin here connects to here that's on the motor one side of the motor the motor is 120 volts 
some of your uh, record players have a motor that's in series with the filaments. This one doesn't. This is a 120 volt motor here. So y your B minus is one side of the line. You can see where it's connected to one side of the motor. If you follow this wire down here, over to here, it goes to one side of the plug. Okay. The other side of the plug comes up here, goes to the third pin down, connects over here to the power switch. When that switch is closed, the power is fed through pin number two of the connector, counting from the top, and down to the filament string right here. There is a surge resistor right here located between the 50 E5 output tube each, between each one in series with the other 50 EX5 filament and the 12 volt filament. Following it further, it goes to the B minus at the, to complete the circuit. From the B minus, there's that red capacitor I showed you that connects to the chassis. That is an ordinary wax paper capacitor, that red one right here right underneath the disk capacitor, right below the audio output transformer. That is going to be replaced with an XY cap, which are virtually impossible to read, but they're in little envelopes I got from Sal's capacitors. So this is an 047. I marked on it my, so I can... I'll know what it is, or the next serviceman that works on this will know what it is. So we're going to replace the 047 wax capacitor with an XY cap, which are these over here. All right, 047, 275 volt rated AC. They're X capacitors. I guess they don't have Y, but I think you can interchange them. I don't see the difference. But that's a lot safer to use these for a line bypass rather than to just replace it. Now I can replace it with a 047 630 volt cap, but I've got these and they were very cheap. They were like 15 cents a piece until he sells out of them from Sal's Capacitor Corner or TubeRadios.com is the website. This is a 10 microfarad, 250 volt electrolytic. It's used 25 volts rather, I'm sorry, 25 volt, 10 microfarad. Cathode bypass capacitor for the audio output tube cathodes. I'm gonna replace that and I've only got these in, on hand. Uh, they are 25, they're 50 volt rated, 22 microfarads. Now, you're going to get a little more gain out of the amplifier by putting in the cathode bypass, which is, if you look just below V2 here, which is the audio output tube, 50 EH5. You'll see a 33 ohm 2 watt resistor. And uh, across that resistor is a 10 microfarad, 25 volt electrolytic. I can't point to it without having the schematic drop down on the bench. But if you look right dead ahead there, you'll see it. By increasing the size of the cathode bypass capacitor, it gives you just a little more bottom end, a little more gain. And it's not going to hurt the radio, so we increased it uh, doubled instead of 10 microfarads, a little over double 22 microfarads, because that's all I got on hand. So we're going to put a, one of these guys in. I have most of my capacitors are low voltage ones. M one of my viewers um, sent me a, a few months ago uh, a bunch of, of these little capacitors, all brand new, nice, good good capacitors, and but the most all of them are low voltage. So in this case, it worked just fine. In addition to one of these 
250 volt 100 microfarad capacitors I can use to replace one section of this. I will probably remove this and I will put a terminal strip in. I gotta give Bob a parts list as to what this thing needs. So this video will be continued because it's getting very long here now. So what I gotta do is to gather up what this thing needs. We'll do that off camera. So I can get him to order the parts. And then we'll settle up on the ones that I do put in here. And I'm going to replace this with a regular 047. This is not a line bypass. This is, a, I'm sorry, this is a point one weather. Um, we're going to replace that with another point one, which I'm pretty sure I have on hand. So there aren't too many wax capacitors. Most of them in here are ceramic discs, and I will be checking those out. So uh, that's going to conclude this section, uh, this part of the video, and I don't even know if this is going to be too long. I might have to make this into two parts just doing what I did today. So this concludes it. What I got to do is get a list of stuff together, what this thing needs, and then uh, give send the list to Bob, and he can order the stuff. Some of the capacitors he can get from Sal's capacitor corner. Then he's going to have to order some terminal strips to, because uh, when I remove this electrolytic, we're going to have to put a terminal strip in there. I had all that stuff in my shop. I got rid of it all. Like I had no choice. So you know, you know the story there. I don't need to be pounding on that sad story all the time. So we're going to have to start from bottom up. So he's he's going to have to order some terminal strips. I don't think he can get them at Radio Shack. Um, and uh, I don't even know where you'd get them, to tell you the truth. I've been just out of this so long, you know. My local electronics place, Jan Electronics, might have them. Um, so I can get together with Bob. Bob only lives uh, probably about... Uh, 25 30 miles away from me here in Connecticut so he uh he's familiar with the area okay so that concludes this video i got to dig into this off camera now and run some checks uh resistance checks and um check some capacitors and make sure that they are um okay like the disc ceramic disc and so forth and we'll join you on part three, whatever this, whatever the next video is. Until then, stay tuned.